Former Governor Phil Bryant became the impetus for investigating what would become the state's largest public welfare scandal. Bryant also initially appointed Shad White as state auditor years ago. White has publicly called Bryant the whistleblower, a title he still stands behind today as allegations of criminal behavior against Bryant only intensify. If I'm asking you who brought information about the case to the state auditor's office, what's the answer? There's only one answer. And so I can either lie and not say the truth or I can say the truth and what the actual answer is. But it doesn't absolve former Governor Phil Bryant of the possibility of being charged in the future, according to State Auditor Shad White. When somebody comes forward with information like that, uh, is it fair to say you don't always suspect them as being involved themselves? Short answer is no. I mean, we take the information and, uh, you know, anytime we take information, we use it to go out and build an investigation, but we're not taking it as God's honest truth, and we're also not taking it as the full truth. We're just going to do our jobs. We're using this as an entree to get into the facts, basically. White says it's not something his office considered because he says they didn't know the extent of Bryant's involvement at the time. The biggest indicator of the former governor's role, text messages first made public by Mississippi Today that show Bryant had an active role in steering former DHS head John Davis to award welfare grants to vendors Bryant preferred. Some of those communications would also reveal NFL legend Brett Favre knew he was taking taxpayer dollars, $5 million to build a volleyball stadium at his alma mater, Southern Miss, and $1.1 million for speaking engagements he never gave. Favre has since paid back the $1.1 million, but not the interest owed. When you began, and even throughout this eight-month investigation, did you or your investigators have reason to suspect former Governor Bryant uh, of some of these things that now are being uh, alleged at this point? No, what I would say is a lot of the things that you have seen that have come out, we were made aware of through the investigation after the first six people were arrested. Uh, and in fact, some of those texts and communications that people have really focused on, they didn't even exist in those first seven months of our investigation. They didn't exist at that moment. So short answer is uh, we were very focused on those six people and those six people alone in order to prove that part of the case. One might say that you were so focused on those six or proving the case for those six that you had your blinders on for the rest. No, no, I don't think you'd say that because think about, think about a drug investigation, all right? You look at a mid-level player in a drug cartel and you think, we think we know maybe who somebody is higher up the chain, but we have to prove our case against that mid-level player or this case is going nowhere. So let's prove our case there. We don't have blinders on to anybody, but we have to prove our case. Let's dedicate our resources to building the evidence against that mid-level player, and then let's go do it. Nearly three years ago, the auditor's office handed this case over to federal authorities. Five of the six players first indicted in the scandal have pleaded guilty, meaning they're likely talking to investigators about others who have yet to be charged. Court documents from Nancy New, for example, have blamed Bryant directly for many aspects of the federal welfare case. But neither Bryant nor Favre have been charged with a crime at this point. That's something White points out more than once during our interview, reiterating it's something he has no control over. Prosecutors have this information in front of them. It's just a matter of them making the decision, and I can't make that decision for them. When you see those comments on social media, too, I think it's, it's coming from a place where folks think, well, why can't he just sentence these people? Why can't he just lock them up? Why can't he just tell them how long they're going to be in prison? And that's just not how the system works. It's not how criminal justice works. Or bring charges against Brett Favre or former Governor Bryant. I, I cannot do that. As, a, as an auditor, I mean, it's in the title, I audit. The team here looks at facts, and we present those facts to prosecutors. Prosecutors don't investigate. They have to go out and take the information they're given, make those kinds of decisions. Now, within the last week, Paul Lacoste, a fitness trainer whose program received welfare funds, filed a counterclaim against the state, saying he had no idea those funds were being used in his business. And another defendant who took a plea deal last month, Christy Webb, the leader of a North Mississippi nonprofit who got funds from the news, is also helping federal investigators. All of this proving that this case very much alive, if still moving somewhat slowly. C.J. LeMaster, three on your side.